the Cessna 210 Wing Spar issue. Let's take a close look on this special episode of In the Hangar. I'm Dan Milliken. At oh, wait a minute. I'm oh. sitting here doing all this stuff and you're going on with this. <laughs> Jeez. He's got to beautify makeup. Uh, yeah. So, I'm Dan Milliken at Off.Taking. I'm here with Cessna John Effinger. You've seen him before on our show. A special edition of In the Hangar. We're actually in a hangar. We're in your new hangar yes, at Borden Field. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so John, um, I've got my 210 in for annual with you. The big issue of the day is the wing spar thing. Tell me a little bit about what that's, why, why we have a wing spar issue. Okay, the, the biggest reason is you had aircraft operated outside the operating limitations, okay. is, is my suspicion. It was out in another country. Uh, they were operating the aircraft for hire. They're high time aircraft. They were being operated in pretty extreme conditions, low level, high turbulence, uh, modified tail section, uh, just to name a few. So we have an issue with age, and then we also have aging aircraft issue, which yeah, is these aircraft something are 40, that we're years old. contending with today. And in doing the research, I think what happened was we found corrosion, and it's, it's aging aircraft. It's, it's the same corrosion old problem is, that yeah. we've been dealing with for 40 years. So you got two issues. One of them's been highlighted because another issue's been highlighted. Uh, the aircraft structurally are sound, they've always been sound, but we got an aging fleet and there's attention that needs to be given to them that they're not necessarily being done. All right, fair enough. So there's attention. Cessna has put, put out an SB. Service. A ser service bulletin. bulletin. yeah. Is an AD coming? I don't know. That's up to the FAA. Okay, so we still don't know yet for sure. Okay, so let's take me into there's an issue with the wing spar show me. yeah several issues that we've had okay uh i'm gonna put the light on in here so you have a later model one uh 210 so, so that, 1980 that's a, a november model right so you've got the zinc chromate primer on here that's a green paint yeah and a lot of these are bare aluminum still or they have okay. an the anodized coating or they may not have anything on them on a lot of the early models with the headliner here, they put a foam cushion in here. Okay. And it traps moisture. I was concerned on your airplane because we have air conditioning, which is unlike most of the 210s out there. Many of them don't have air conditioning. And we had a lot of issues up here with leaking and water, you know, from the evaporators and just operating an air conditioning system, the, the condensation. Your, your spar is perfect, perfect. you know. That's great. Perfect. News. Perfect. <laughs> so, I like to hear those. So, words. we haven't got any issues in here. The problem with a lot of aircraft is um, with that foam in there, uh, there is also, we've had other issues, aging aircraft issues as well. Same, same scenario. Um, they used a lead blanket material, uh, lead impregnated. Some of the glues that they used back in the day caused corrosion that are just corrosive by nature. When you introduce moisture, such as an air conditioner, or just the, just the sitting outside on a ramp, oxidation, salt air, any of those things all cause corrosion. It's, it's, it's the right compounds and combination is what causes these issues. This plane's been mostly dry, clean climate. We did have the air conditioner, but the, the primers protected it, and this doesn't have the glued on Foam. Foam. And that, I guess for some of the people, that's been the real issue because this foam covers yeah. that. It attracts this. like a sponge. And, and so, it and then it's the all noise. stuck to it. So you got to scrape that, all that foam off and everything else. And it's become a big issue. So you have moisture that's retained. You have whatever environment they're operating in. If they're by the coastline somewhere, you got salty condensation, okay. salt air. And then the glue uh, combination may have also had an impact on it. Okay. And it's just a setup for corrosion. And that's the problem that has been brought to light with this new service bulletin. What's this, I hear about eddy current inspection. Okay. How does that work? What that is, it's a non-destructive inspection means. 
and it, uh, I wouldn't call it like an x-ray, but it'll check for flaws in the depth of the metal. Okay. And, you know, throughout that process, you could detect flaws underneath the metal, inside inclusions inside the metal. Um, is and, it, is it, and it'll also show up cracks. Uh, most external cracks, uh, it's been common use to use dye penetrant, you know. Uh, this is a little different because they're, I think that the concern is uh, with the fatigue that they experience with the aircraft that in question, um, yeah. we're over in Australia and with the accident aircraft, I think their concern is inclusions inside in the depth of the metal. So your eddy current is going to show kind of like your x-ray that you take if you broke a bone. It's going to show a crack within the uh, internal is, part is of the structure. Is that something that's easy to have done? I mean, can you it's, do an it's eddy, easy to, eddy current? No. Um, I was certified to do it uh, years back, but your certification, it's a national standard and you've got to stay current. And it's only good for the company that you're working for to time that you're operating so doing only a that few kind people of, do the eddy current. it's going to be limited. Okay. And then you have also got to find, you know, too. there's a lot of shops that I've been calling around locally here and they only do it in house, the eddy current shop. So you got to find somebody with the mobile devices. Okay. Um, you're going to see a lot more people get certified like the Cessna factories now, the Cessna service centers. Again, you can get certified for a company while you're working for them to do that process. So you'll see with the onset of this, and there's been other ADs that required eddy current in the past, and um, you'll see it uh, more you pronounced with Do you uh, think if the FAA comes out with a AD that we will have to do, do you think an eddy current will be a part of the AD? I would imagine it's going to be. Okay, so even even though I look really good here, if they come out well, with an AD Well, on January, yours, February, if there's no corrosion noted and there's been no metal removed, I believe they're going to leave it alone. Oh, that's right. I've heard. Is. Yeah, so, so there's a chance I'm good. On yours, I expect that there won't be any you further expect, action. Okay. But then a lot of people, especially that have the foam and, and they don't have... Well, any, once you start removing material, you got to figure out the depth of the corrosion. you got to find out that it's all removed until you get clean metal underneath. Okay. You'll have to find out how much diminishment there has been because you'll have a standard on how deep you could go with this corrosion and uh, to still be acceptable for the structural integrity of the SMAR. All right. I, I, I see two different schools um, among the 210 community and 177. One school of thought is that, you know, you, we need to be safe and we need to do whatever, you know, get the eddy current, get the inspections, do, do, do this and that, like almost a knee-jerk reaction to this one incident. Um, other people saying, yeah, we found corrosion in all these different 210s. And, um, that's, that's been a known issue with the 210 models. Okay. So if you're doing a pre-purchase on a 210 and if the person is knowledgeable about the 210 issues, that should have been inspected years ago. It's the ones that, again, the aging aircraft fleet, the guys had the airplane for 30 years and nobody's ever pulled the headliner on it. You know, we see that all the time when we open up subfloors and they've never been cleaned out, you know. Okay. This is all aging aircraft. Um, so people common. need to do their annual correctly and not just cut corners. That's part of the problem. Part of it could be caught in the annual. And the other part is uh, having shops that understand the weak areas of the particular model aircraft they're working on. If you're doing an annual on a Cessna 210, you should know the weak areas of the 210. Um, you know, if you're working on a 182 that has that old sound deadening, you know, how many times I've pulled these kick panels off and found corrosion just about halfway through the skin because it's never been addressed. Um, you can see on your plane we've replaced this old cat hose with scat hose. You know, that's another corrosion area in aging aircraft fleet. There's things that need to be replaced over time periods. And if they're not getting done, you're, you know, your landing gear hoses. It's all aging aircraft. It's taking care of the aging fleet. And, and it's, it's it, there isn't consistency throughout the whole industry. All right, so going forward for me and my wing spar, what am I looking at now for the future? 
I'm going to sign off this service bulletin when it comes out saying previously complied with and no corrosion noted. All right, I like the sound of so, that. And hopefully they're not going to put another restriction in there. Well, and the other good news for me is that as as the pilot, as the owner operator of this you airplane, know you got a sound I feel aircraft. a lot more confident in because I wonder. I'm flying around. I'm doing you know commercial maneuvers, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, I wonder if I have a crack in that wing spar. This is one thing that I can take off my mind.